hi guys welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new without further ado let's go ahead and get straight into today's video so today's video is very long overdue today we're going to be going ahead and kind of focusing on our acrylic application i've been meaning to do this video for quite some time but for some reason i just haven't i don't know but yeah i've been meaning to do this for quite some time because as you guys know i haven't always like talked during my videos and I have done a few application videos, but I was kind of like doing a voiceover and things just got a little bit awkward because I'm like trying to talk and like keep up with myself in a time lapse. So I wanted to sit down and do something that was a little bit more one to one so that it could be a little bit more understandable. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. And I should disclaim that I am not certified or licensed in any way. These are purely just tips and tricks that help me get my application in specific. So while the tips and tricks that I have are useful to some degree, I am not certified or licensed. So do not take my words as like the end all be all because I'm still just like a regular person. So yeah, enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and get straight into that. So here are my natural nails. And as you can see, I already have my peel off base coat fully applied. Now, for those of you who don't know, I like to use a peel off base coat so that I can go ahead and pop these off directly after I finish my sets. And it just makes the removal process a lot less invasive and more gentle on your nail beds. And if you're interested in seeing how I apply my peel off base coat, I will leave a few videos in the cards above for you guys. Okay, so I went ahead and sized out all of my nail tips for today and I'm going to go ahead and glue them on using some base coat. And before I shape and file these, I'm going to go over this with a layer of base coat. All right, so the tips are fully applied and the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is cut them down. And to cut them down, I'm gonna be using my tip cutters. I'm probably gonna keep them kind of long, so I might cut it to about here. Yeah, I think this is a pretty decent length. Now, before we get into the application, I'm going to go ahead and shape up the free edge using my 88 grit nail file. I don't really like to focus too much on filing the sides yet because the tips that I am using are pretty straight. And if I file the sides too much, it can start to create a ledge where, as you can see, it's already nice and straight. And I don't really want to mess that up. But for now, we're just going to focus on the free edge. All right, so my nails are nice and prepped and we are finally ready to move on to the application portion of the video. Okay, so I have my monomer and my acrylic powder here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you my application for these two nails and then for my other three, I will kind of just like be quiet and let you guys actually see what I'm doing, but I'm really gonna go into depth about what I'm doing on these two specifically. All right, so first off, I do wanna start by saying that normally when I'm doing application, I don't like to focus too much on doing a certain method. So for example, I don't do the three, two, or one bead method. I try and use that as like a starter ground, but for the most part, I kind of add as many beads as I need because I really want my application to be as smooth as it can be so that 
my shaping process doesn't take too long. But for the sake of today's video, I will try and walk you through the three bead method, kind of. I will be adding some beads here and there, so it won't technically be the three bead method, but we will kind of be using that as our basis. So when I'm doing the three bead method, I like to visualize my nail split up into three different pieces. That just allows me to visualize where I wanna place my beads so that I get a good structure going. All right, so I'm going to dampen my brush, make sure that all of the bristles are nice and coated. Once I have my brush nice and damp, I'm going to drain it on one side and dip into the side that I didn't drain. So again, you wet the brush, drain it on the side that you're not using, and dip it in the side that you didn't drain. And then I go ahead and I pat about four to five times. And before I place this on my nail, I do like to let all of that excess powder kind of get wet and whatever doesn't get wet, I just like to tap off. And as you can see, the bead does still have a little bit of product on it. So I kind of just like to tap it off a little bit and then I apply it. This one's kind of dried out, so I'm not gonna use it. So again, I'm gonna dip into my monomer drain very lightly and dip into my powder about four to five times. And of course, I'm allowing all of that powder to kind of get wet. And again, I'm applying it only a third of the way down my nail. And before I smooth it out, I'm making sure that the bead is nice and centralized. And then I drag it downwards. And of course, you don't wanna to apply too much force because you don't want to completely drag the bead off of the nail but you do want it to move. So don't be afraid to apply a little bit of force. Just make sure to be a little bit gentle. And of course, while I'm doing this, I'm making sure to smooth out the sides as I go. And once I get to the end, I'm just going to kind of spread it out and make sure that everything is nice and even. So this is the first bead. Now, normally it's not this dry, but trying to do this while I'm talking is a little bit difficult. But as you can see, the bead is a third of the way down and it's covering all sides. And we are ready for the second bead. Now I'm basically going to repeat this process. I'm going to dip it into my monomer, drain one side very lightly and pat into my powder four to five times. And then afterwards, I go ahead and apply it to my nail and smooth it downwards. Again, once I have that bead nice and placed, I'm making sure to centralize it before I drag it downwards because I want my shape to be nice and crisp once I get to the shaping and filing process. And once I have it centralized, I do like to just smooth it downwards. I'm making sure to bring in the sides using the body of my brush. I wouldn't recommend doing this because as you get down further, the bristles move a lot easier. So I do recommend using kind of like the base of the brush because the bristles here are pretty stiff. All right, so we are two thirds of the way down the nail and this is what it is looking like so far. So now we're gonna apply our cuticle bead and this bead is definitely the most critical bead to apply. Especially for beginners, this bead is definitely a little bit more difficult because you don't want to apply the bead and it's like flooding all over the place and you don't want it to be too dry because you want it to flow seamlessly into the cuticle. So this bead definitely takes a lot of practice and you wanna make sure that your liquid to powder ratio works for the liquid and the powder that you're actually using. So for today, I'm using my Young Nails Monomer and my Valentino powder. So it kind of dries a little bit fast. So I try not to try my bead out too much, especially during this cuticle portion because I want it to flow nice and even and look nice and seamless. So again, I'm wetting my brush, making sure to get all of those bristles nice and saturated. Then I'm lightly draining one side and I'm tapping into my monomer four to five times. Tapping off the excess powder and then I'm going to apply the bead right below the cuticle. Now before I smooth it down, I do like to make sure that my cuticle area is nice and situated. Once it's situated, I like to smooth down the sides first just to make sure that everything is nice and seamless and then I go and I smooth out the middle. Like I said before, this is kind of difficult doing while I'm talking because the bead is like drying out and stuff. So I kind of like missed this area and this area, 
but that's okay because like I said, I don't like to follow the three bead method too closely. And I do like to add beads here and there just to make it look, you know, as close as to perfect as I can get it. So I'm just going to take smaller beads and place it in the areas that don't have any acrylic. And I'm just going to smooth out my application as best as I can. And of course, I'm doing the same thing on the other side. So here is the application so far. Now it looks pretty good, but I do think that it could look a little bit better and a little bit more smooth. So as you can see, we have a few like little dips in the nail. Now I am going to go back in with some smaller beads just to make sure that it's nice and level. I'm basically doing the same thing that I did with the sides and I'm kind of just going in those little spots that are missing acrylic and I'm adding some there just to make it nice and smooth. Now when you're doing this, because you're using such small beads, you want to make sure to use a very light force because you don't want to take off the bead because that kind of just like defeats the purpose of putting it there. So as you can see, this dent is pretty much smoothed out. It's not perfect, but it's smooth enough so that when you file, you don't have to over file and try and overcompensate for this area. Now I'm going to work on this area here that kind of dips towards the tip. Okay, so here is the first nail completed and as you can see, it's not perfect, but it is definitely really, really smooth and I think this is a good base to work with before we go ahead and shape and file. So now that this nail is done, I'm going to again walk you through this nail just to make sure that you have everything nice and down pat. So again, I'm making sure to fully saturate my brush and I'm going to lightly drain it on one side and dip into my powder about four to five taps. And before I apply this to my nail, I'm gonna make sure that all of the powder is nice and saturated and I'm placing it a third of the way down my nail. I'm making sure that my sides are nice and good. Make sure that no acrylic is like slipping on the sides. And then I'm going to lightly pat and brush this downwards. And as you can see, I kind of have to work a little fast because it's kind of warm in my room and I am noticing that my beads are drying a little bit faster than usual, but that's okay. That's nothing that we can fix. This is the first bead done. Now, as you can see, the tip is a little bit thin, so I'm gonna go back towards the end and just kind of correct that. So I'm going in with my second bead, saturating my brush fully, lightly patting on one side and dipping in about four to five times getting rid of any of that excess powder and placing two thirds up the nail. And again, before I smooth it out, I'm making sure to centralize my bead. And then I go ahead and I smooth it all out. And now we are onto the cuticle bead. Again, saturating my brush, lightly patting on one side, and dipping in about four to five times, getting rid of that excess powder and going directly onto the nail. And of course, if you get it on your skin, make sure to remove it as quick as you can because you really don't want this stuff on your skin. Now, before I smooth this out, I'm gonna make sure that I have my cuticle area nice and situated, and I'm going to smooth out the sides first, then work on the center. This just helps to maintain the sort of round appearance of your apex. So similarly to my pointer finger, I'm gonna go in on the sides here and make sure that I'm filling in all of those gaps. Now, as I said towards the beginning, my tip is a little bit too thin. So I'm gonna go back in with some more acrylic and just make it a little bit more structured, similarly to my pointer finger. Okay. 
Okay, so this nails application is done. And as you can see, I don't really have to do too much leveling with any dips or anything because this nail is a little bit thicker than this nail. So I'm probably just going to make it a little bit more level. Now, as you can see, my middle fingers apex is a little bit higher than my pointer fingers. Now, honestly, this is definitely more up to personal choice if you want to go thicker or thinner. I'm personally going to go thinner for today because I'm not wearing these to last. But if you are wearing these to last, I definitely recommend going something a little bit more thicker. And this is actually really funny, but I do get a lot of criticism on my apex and my structure. Honestly, do what works best for you. And if you take clients, do what works best for your clients. Don't get too caught up in making your structure look the way someone else wants it to look. If it works for you and your nails aren't breaking or your client's nails are breaking, then you're doing good and your apex is working for you. I personally don't mind having a thinner apex because I don't wear my nails to last. But normally when I am doing someone else's nails, I typically do it more like this. So yeah, definitely use your own discretion when it comes to that because structure is something that comes with time and practice. And also nails are an art form and it should look the way that you want it to look and it should function the way that you want it to function. So if it's working for you, stick with it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay, so now that these two nails are done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my nails and I'm gonna kind of just like shut up and let you guys watch me so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and kind of just soak it all in. Oh, and I'm also just gonna like move this because it's really distracting. Okay, so this is the application 100% done. And as you can see, it is definitely not 100% perfect, but it is good enough so that the shaping and filing process won't take forever. So I'm first gonna start by filing the side walls and the undersides of my nails using my 8080 grit nail file.
Next up, I'm going to go ahead and seal my cuticles using my fine grit sanding band. All right, and now I'm gonna go back in with my 80-80 grit nail file just to completely file over the surface. Now I'm going to take that same nail file and just kind of reinforce the tip of the nail because as you can see it's a little bit dull so I'm just going to make it a little bit more crisp. And now I'm going back in with my fine grit sanding band just to go ahead and file underneath and make it a little bit more thin. And lastly, I'm going to buff my nails using my mini buffer. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly wash my hands and then we'll get straight into today's nail art. Okay, so my hands are nice and washed and we are finally ready to move on to today's nail art. Now today's nail art is gonna be super simple because I really just wanted to focus more on my application. So today we're gonna be doing the very viral like nail trend that was like 
more viral like a few months ago to be honest so it's the nail trend where it's like a chrome swirl and the end of the tip is um kind of like covered in that chrome powder now this set was more popular like a few months ago but i never did it and i kind of feel a little bit left out and i also wanted to do something a little bit more simple because i don't want to distract from the main point of today's video which is the application okay so i just have my mixing plate here now for today's nail set all i'm really going to need is some black gel polish and a chrome powder of your choice and I am going gold just to like match my jewelry and lastly I'm gonna need some rhinestone glue and some top coat okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of this black gel polish onto my mixing plate And before we do anything, I'm actually just going to wipe off my nails with some isopropyl alcohol. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint on that swirl, kind of like in whatever pattern I choose to. I see a lot of people do it in different ways. And I'm going to go in with my medium nail art brush for this. And now I'm just taking this black and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all of those gaps. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Before I cure this, I'm just going to wipe down the sides and make sure everything is nice and neat. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cure this for a full 30 seconds. It is fully cured, and now I'm going to go ahead in with my chrome powder of my choice. So normally when I'm doing chrome nails, I like to go with the less is more approach because you don't want to put too much chrome powder because it starts looking really grainy, and I want it to look more mirrored. Now I'm just going to take my rhinestone glue and put a little bit of that onto my mixing plate and I'm going to create a border with the rhinestone glue and just kind of go around and make it I guess kind of like 3D. For that I'm going in with a pretty short nail art brush because the rhinestone glue is super thick and using a long brush it like won't move around as easily. Alright, so I have something that looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and cure this for a full 30 seconds just to kind of like flash cure this. So I think I'm going to go in with a second layer because as you can see, it's not that 3D and I kind of want it to stand out just a little bit more. Okay, so I think that's a little bit better. And again, I'm curing this for 30 seconds. Okay, and honestly, that is it. The last thing I need to do is just go over this with a layer of top coat. Okay, so this nail is done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the rest of my nails and then we'll go ahead and finish off this nail set.
okay so this is the finished product i really really love this super like cute and simple yet classy nail design i'm gonna go ahead and finish this off with some cuticle oil And that completes today's set. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know that like I'm not the greatest teacher, but I really hope that you found this to be useful, especially if you are a beginner and you're trying to perfect your acrylic application. Now, of course, this is not a tutorial on how to make it super perfect, but it definitely does help with shortening your shaping and filing process and making the entire process a lot shorter. So of course, if you have any feedback for me, definitely let me know down in the comments below. And of course, I would love to hear what you guys think of this nail set. And again, I know this was trending like months and months ago, but I really wanted to jump on it and like try it for myself. And yeah, I really enjoyed how it came out. I think it's like super elegant and just like really classy. If you guys have any suggestions for any future videos that you guys would like me to create for you guys, whether it be nail designs or tutorials such as this one, definitely let me know down in the comments below. But as always, I want to say thank you guys so, so much for tuning in today and I will see you guys in the next one.